histories of Palestinian heritage. Uh, please visit and learn a little more about uh, the culture of Palestine. And on this side, we have our sponsor groups, the groups that helped us put this event together. Please visit their tables, find out a little more about their work. Um, Maggie Coulter is part of the Coalition for Palestinian Rights. She was uh, an integral part of putting this event together. She worked very hard uh, to make sure this event uh, comes together uh, the way it did. Uh, she is very active in the Sacramento area for Palestinian rights, and she wants to come up and just let you know about what's going on in Sacramento, what you can do, what people are doing, and how you can get involved a little more. Please welcome Maggie Colt. Um, I'm going to be really brief. I really appreciate everybody being here. And again, I want to thank Mo Mahana very much for letting us use this space. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the uh, cooperation of the weather. Um, yes, there are a number of activities here you can be involved with. We all have to get involved if we're going to change the situation. And hopefully that message has come through today. I want to emphasize, I'll just mention, we've got the Palestine American Congress is over here, Veterans for Peace, who's taken a very strong stand on this issue the Party for Socialism and Liberation, the APER, the American Association for Palestinian Equal Rights, who recently held a film festival at Sac State. And we look to um, more activities from these young people, Jewish Voice for Peace, uh, Sacramento Area Peace Action, the Israel Divestment Campaign, which is still collecting signatures to put pressure on PERS and STIRS, the two public retirement funds to divest from countries, yes. companies that are supporting Woo! this occupation. And since I have the microphone, Sacramento Co-op Owners for Democracy and Human Rights. We are a group of owners, many of us longtime members of the Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op. We felt that our co-op should, uh, well we felt they should stop carrying products from Israel. It seemed pretty logical to us, like the Olympia Washington Co-op did. Uh, as part of the BDS to pressure Israel to end its violation against Palestinian human rights. Unfortunately, the board of the Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op didn't agree with us. Um, we've collected enough signatures to let members of our co-op vote on this issue, and there are some 6,000 members of this co-op. Um, so the other thing was, as soon as we collected those signatures, the, the board said, you can't table in front of the co-op anymore about Palestinian human rights. Your group can't table anymore. And last month, La I'm sorry, last week they let two representatives of what essentially is the Israel lobby position table in front of the co-op. This is an outrage in our community, and it doesn't matter if you're a member of the co-op or not, the Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op Board is saying that one position gets to be heard about this issue. It is the position of the Israel lobby, unfortunately also our U.S. Congress. It is against Palestinian human rights. It is against BDS. We in the community need to say that's not right. We need people out in front of that co-op talking about Palestinian human rights. And if this organization is going to call itself a democracy then, and, and uphold values of free speech and uphold values of sustainability, then it needs to be responsive to the community. So even if you're not a member, I urge you to sign up over here with us. We've got a letter that you can sign to the co-op. Um, we also will be, um, we've got a sign-up sheet over there so we can let you know about other activities. We're going to be developing a pledge for people to not buy Israeli products and not invest in Israeli companies. Um, so we've got a couple other speakers I just want to bring up quickly. Um, Aruj Ahmed, who is a union activist and she is also a member of our Sacramento group, is going to come up. And then after her... Hello. Assalamualaikum for those of you who are Muslim. Um, I'll be very brief. Uh, Maggie, I work with her on the BDS campaign at the co-op, so I will also put a pitch in for that. Um, Maggie, you know, what I, what I call it is it's a, they've banned essentially all topics or anything related to Palestine, but not Israel. So it's very discriminatory, and this is an institution that essentially is for, you know, uh, farmers' rights and for, <coughs> excuse me, indigenous rights and fair trade and organic foods, but, but they're not recognizing basic Palestinian human Human rights, and that's 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 hypocrisy. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm in this community. I, I organize uh, labor workers, workers uh, at hotels and casinos around Sacramento, um, and <laughs> I got involved with the labor movement because I've uh, since I was a youth been involved with you know anti-war, anti-imperialist cam imperialist campaigns, and I thought naturally labor would be a, um, a way for me to get 
further involved in that kind of stuff. Uh, what I, to my uh, dissatisfaction, I learned that labor does not, in the U.S., does not support um, a free Palestinian state. In fact, Richard Trumka, who is a, the president of the AFL-CIO in the U.S., made a statement in 2009 um, against BDS. Uh, well, while the rest of the world is actually, in the rest of the labor world is actually very uh, vocally in, in favor of Palestinian human rights. And um, as a person, as a young person, as a person in the labor movement, that to me is very disappointing. Um, I want to just quickly ask, how many of you are in labor unions here in Sacramento? Actually, quite a few of you, okay, myself included. Um, and, you know, we, we, what you've seen in the last few months since January is that the Arab, Arab world has sparked, um, has been a catalyst in inspiring movement and inspiring action amongst youth here. You know, what's happened in Wisconsin is directly, I think, linked to what happened in, in Egypt and Tunisia, uh, and what's been happening in Palestine. Um, and, you know, I work with youth in the area, and so many of them use that as a, as a point of, um, as a point of, like, inspiration. When I talk to them about, like, why they came out to the streets like so we got arrested, you know, on Monday with the teachers, or why they have, you know, organized around fee hikes. Uh, so, I, what I think it's a shame is the labor movement, um, and I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to badmouth the labor movement altogether, but I do want to point out that there's a, there's a, there's a, um, there's a gap in between what our youth and what people are thinking about Palestine and about human rights and what labor is putting out there. And so I want to re recognize that. I want you all to be to recognize that you know, as members of unions or in this community, we need to be vocal about um, how we feel about this issue. We can't say that you know, labor is a very strong proponent of immigrants' rights. Well, whereas in Palestine, you know, Palestinian immigrants essentially work in Israel, but they're discriminated against, like, you know, heavily. The fact that they have to go to work in Israel, I think there was a, uh, a report in 2010 where um, in the high-tech industry in Israel, um, there's 84,000 jobs, but only, any, only 400, 500 are actually, you know, uh, filled by Arabs. And that 83% of Israeli companies have said, yes, they admit they discriminate against Arabs. That's discrimination against labor. And um, for our union movement in the U.S. not to recognize that and not to see that, that as that, that correlating with what's happening here with uh, our brothers and sisters in Central America, you know, coming here to work at it, uh, as immigrants, if they don't see that correlation, you know, something's wrong and we have to change that. So I just invite you all to reach out to your labor organizations, tell them how, what you think, and, and, you know, remember, this is as much our fight, what's happening in Palestine, as the immigrants' rights movement here in the U.S. or anything else. So um, I just wanna, uh, just wanted to tell that to you all. I also wanted to kind of end with this. Um, as many of you know, that you know, farm workers in, in the U.S., when they were organizing in the fields, uh, the one way they would show solidarity, because they were, so, they were all over the place, scattered working in different parts of the field. My father was a farm worker, so I know this from experience. One way the, they would let the, the boss know that they were working together was by clapping. And uh, it's called a solidarity clap. And I want to end with that, with my, my piece on that, because as, as long as I've heard that clap, I always think of those different claps bearing different movements. All these people here, myself, all of you, like we're all part of this struggle, whether we're Palestinian, Pakistani, labor, you know, immigrants, whatever. So if you could all kind of join me in that, that'd be great. So it starts off slow, ends up really fast, okay? So. Final speaker. Somebody took my paper. 